Hey guys, it's your boy Mark Sanders back with yet another video here with yet another wrestling review and I have done it y'all for the first time since AEW uh, became a thing I have reviewed, well I'm, after this, I will have reviewed every single AEW pay-view from a single year yes, every single AEW pay-view from 2021 has now or is about to have been officially reviewed, man. Yo. And, of course, my review is on AEW Full Gear 2021 pay-per-view review. The show just got off the air, and what did I think of this pay-per-view? I'm going to be honest. I'm not, like, a huge AEW fan. I mean, back... When Fighter Fest 2019 happened, if you go back and watch my review of that, I absolutely love that show. And in the heat of the moment, I was like, yes, AEW is my favorite thing now. But, uh, you know, I've watched, you know, about a handful of pay views of AEW since then. And, um, I would say I'm a casual fan. Like, we don't get Dynamite here, we don't get Rampage here in New Zealand. So I just go, I just look for streams for each pay view and. Yeah, and now I've done the latest one, uh, AEW Full Gear 2021, the first time I've ever reviewed a Full Gear preview as well. So, uh, what did your boy think of AEW Full Gear 2021? And by the way, just two more wrestling reviews for this year after this. Uh, those being, uh, uh, WWE Survivor Series 2021. And NXT TakeOver War Games 2021 in December. Uh, not really looking forward to War Games. War Games. I know the neckbeards are probably fapping 24-7 thinking about it. But I'm, I'm just not into War Games, man. But anyway, we'll talk about War Games next month on December 5th. But for now, AEW Full Gear 2021, I thought was absolutely amazing. Yo, I had so much fun watching this show, man. It was long as shit. It was like freaking six hours, I think. And I never really got bored. I mean, of course, I did feel the time. But I never got bored watching this show, honestly. I had so much fun watching it. Uh, so many epic matches, man. Like, that might have to do with um, my stream. The live stream that I managed to find was absolutely fantastic holy crap it hardly ever uh buffered it usually buffers like crazy man when i try to stream pay-per-views but it really didn't uh tonight i mean not much like it did a couple times but man like wow consider me very pleasantly surprised about that and of course i absolutely hope that uh we, uh, that, uh, live streams, when I find live streams for pay-per-views, uh, you know, um, that, uh, they stream as good as this, hopefully better, even, hopefully even better, I should say, because this show was absolutely amazing, man, uh, I had so much fun, and I'm very satisfied with the ending, too, um, so how, mu how many matches do we have? Ten matches, I believe, um, and, uh, yeah, man, the show was long, man, but it was so freaking good. Oh, my gosh. Uh, opening match, we have the buy-in pre-show match. And, by the way, there were tons of, uh, tributes to Eddie Guerrero during the show. Because, uh, today, November 13th, 2021, um, is actually the anniversary of when he passed away. So, that was so awesome to see all those tributes, you know. Um, but anyway, the buy-in pre-show match, Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa versus Jamie Hayda and Nyla Rose. It was a fun, solid match, you know, I kind of, this, this match feels like age, this, this match feels like forever go to me now, because it's been like seven hours since I watched that match, so it really does feel like forever ago to me, you know, um, but it was a fun match, um, and Hikaru Shida actually pinned Nyla Rose, yes! Cool. Um, and now the show officially begins, and we open the show with Darby Allen versus MJF. This match was fire. This match was absolutely epic, and this is literally only my third favorite match of the show. I'm not even kidding. 
Oh my god, this match was awesome. Um, lots of excellent counters, lots of innovative spots, like you had Darby Allen, he was going to go for the coffin drop, uh, I, I believe that's the name of that move, and he was going to do it to inside the ring, but MJF rolled to the outside, but then he noticed that MJF happened to be lying on the outside when he went outside to rest, and he just did the coffin drop to MJF on the outside, that was epic, um, MJF uh, did... A tombstone pile driver to Darby Allen on the freaking apron. That was brutal. And just excellent chemistry. There was, I believe there was a part when they were both had each other rolled up. And they were just doing roll up pins to each other. Again, 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 again. That was also epic. And uh, it was just a blast of a match, man. And uh, the, the ending of the match came. Um, uh, MJF grabbed Darby Allen's uh, skateboard. And then he put it back in the ring, and then he was telling Darby Allen, come on, do it, you know, hit me with the skateboard. And then Darby Allen said no. He, Darby Allen gave it to the referee, I believe. And then, of course, when the referee, well, like, once this, that happened, I knew what was going to happen. Uh, the referee was, to, was you know, putting away the skateboard. And then MGF grabbed out the ring. Boom. On Darby Allen. Headlock. One, two, three. MGF. Cheats to win. I was rooting for Darby Allen, man, because he's probably my favorite AEW guy. Uh, but what a match! This match was awesome. So much fun. Again, like like the pre-show match, like like the like the buy-in pre-show match. This match feels like forever ago, man. Uh, even though it was today, but uh, yeah, this match was awesome. Next up, we have the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. We have the Lucha Brothers, consisting of Penta Alzeri Miedo. Apologies if I butchered that. And Ray Phoenix, defending against FTR, uh, consisting of Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Another awesome match. I, I don't think it was quite as good as Darby Allen and MJF, but this match was awesome. Again, I'm struggling to remember. I remember lots of awesome like arm drags and stuff. And, um, I just remember it was awesome. All right, I, I, I wrote down in, in WordPad for this match, four and a quarter. Uh, I remember the Lucha Brothers retained, and I remember it being a really awesome match. All right, again, like, these earlier matches feel like so long ago, man. Like, because cause how, how long the show was. This show was like six hours, man. Again, you know, I was, like, entertained the whole way through. You know, but still, like, it's kind of hard to, uh, um, y you know, um, yeah, but awesome match, Lucha Brothers retained, yeah, um, in fact, I might need to dock off a couple points off that star rating, just for the fact that I can't really remember what happened, um, uh, Alright, next up we have the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament Finals match where the winner receives a future AEW World Championship match. Miro versus Brian Danielson. I did say, and, and uh, yes, Brian Danielson made his AEW debut um, uh, at uh, All Out, which I did review when that show on the same day that show happened. And uh, for the first time, and I, this is not something I ever would have thought I'd get to do, but I'm reviewing a Brian Danielson match. Not Daniel Bryan, I got to review a Brian Danielson match. Uh, I'm not counting at all uh, though, like those, low, those neckbeards who think they're cool from the early like 2010s. Like, they think they're cool for calling him Brian Danielson, even though he's he's Daniel Bryan, and he was Daniel Bryan in WWE, you know what I mean? So, for the first time, for real, I got to, I get to review a, a Brian Danielson match, and this match was really solid. Um, just, you know, basically what you'd expect. Um, lots of moments when you thought it might go either way, but ultimately, Brian Danielson got the win. Again, this match feels like a long time ago, so um, I forgot how. I think he made him tap. I could be wrong, but yeah. And next up, oh my gosh, this match was epic. 
And the, the, this next match was only my second best match of the night. Falls Count Anywhere Tag Team Match. Christian Cage and Jurassic Express consisting of Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Super Click consisting of Adam Cole and the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson. Oh my gosh, this match was... Oh my gosh, man. Yo. They wasted no time with this match, man. They were getting out weapons. It was, what, 30 minutes of just non-stop bashing each other with weapons. Holy shit, that, that's just... Oh my gosh, epic, mate. Yo. 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 Um. 22 minutes. Man, they did so much, it felt like much longer. Alright, um. Um. It was epic, man. You had finishes everywhere. You had weapons everywhere. You had trash cans. You had tables. Um. You had them fight at the stage area, which was awesome. Uh, you had moments when you thought it might be over. Um, it's just awesome. It's just carnage. It's just awesome carnage being spewed on screen. All right, just go watch it, man. Uh, even the commentators pointed out. I'm very impressed with uh, Christian's performance in this match, and I was too. He really like. He really stood out to me when he did something like he would come and you know stop a stop a fall from happening. You know when the other team was making a pin and all that. And he, he actually did the spear on the stage to somebody. That was awesome. Luchasaurus was badass in this match too. He was doing... He's such a huge muscular dude with the freaking mask. He's doing flips and everything off freaking stages and shit. This match was epic. This match was just epic, man. And it ended with a concerto to one of the Young Bucks. I forgot which one. It was Jungle Boy who did the concerto and made the pin. Although Christian was going to... It was actually Christian who set it up, and then Jungle Boy came and saying, no, please let me do this. And then Christian gave the chair to him, bang, pin, one, two, three, absolutely awesome. Absolutely epic match. Uh, up to this point, by far my favorite match of the night. Alright, next up we have Cody Rhodes and Puck versus Malachi Black and Andrade Al Idolo. And by the way, Malachi Black... Is Alistair Black. Alright. From WWE. And Andre El Idolo. Is Andrade Cien Almas. Okay. They're both in AEW now. They they had an awesome rivalry in NXT. And now they're in AEW. And as the tag team. Which is cool. Fighting Cody Rhodes and Pac. Um, this is an old WWE match I noticed. This. Um, I, I, I really had a blast watching this match too. Just tons of awesome chemistry in this match. Uh, lots of great stuff happening. Admittedly, <clears throat> I did leave for a little bit. I think I needed to go. I think I went for a piss, like, during this match. Not because it was boring. It was, it was because I really needed to piss because my bladder was bursting. Me. Yeah, my bladder was bursting, man. And so I really had to take a piss during this match. And then, um, again, I didn't really see how it ended. I think it was a... DQ, well, uh, actually not DQ, but I think like right after they were attacked and it looked like a DQ because of that and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but Cody and Puck won. I don't know who got pinned uh, out of Malachi and Andrade, but I really had a blast watching the Smash. But I don't know if my, I don't know if, because in, in my ratings I gave it four and a quarter. Again, I might need to, I might, like, that might not be a proper rating, just because, you know, for a decent amount, a good decent amount of this match, I wasn't really watching it because I had to take a pee and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. And next up, we have the AEW Women's World Championship match. We have Dr. Britt D Baker, DMD, who has the same birthday as John Felix Anthony Sination, by the way. Although, nowhere near as good. I know you Nickbeards probably think it's the other way around, you dumb Nickbeards. Who fapped non-stop 24-7 to the Indies. Um, defending against Ty Conti. This match was dang good. This was another awesome match. Alright. Uh... However, I just noticed with a lot of Britt Baker matches, there's endless finishes in her matches, man. Stomps, like there's like a billion stomps, a billion kickouts, 
and it's not real. I'm, I mean, it's kind of, it's, I just don't feel it, you know, it, like that well, when, you know, when, when it's in her matches, you know, I do have a crush on her and all that, you know, but still, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I actually thought Ty Conti might get the win, you know, because, uh, Brett Baker actually did like a stomp to her on the freaking steel steps, so that was cool, but, uh, I think Brett brought her up to get the one. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Um, AEW Women's World Championship match, another awesome match. I was, I just like seeing title changes. It's, you know what I mean. So, so that's. I was kind of rooting for Ty Conti just for that, you know. <laughs> and next up we have CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston. Yes, CM Punk wrestling AEW pay view for the second time. Um. This match was fun. Um, this match, f to me, felt like five minutes, man. But according to Wikipedia, it said 12 minutes before. It was actually 11 minutes, and I'm like, what? But it was fun for the was Nothing amazing or anything. You're, you're probably going to see a bunch of neckbeards giving this, like, 6.75 stars. You know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it was cool. You know, I was, I was just happy to see CM Punk wrestle. You know, I don't really know Eddie Kingston, you know, but uh, it was a fun match for those. It, it got bloody ass, man. CM Punk got busted open. Uh, Eddie Kingston, I don't know if Eddie Kingston necessarily got busted open or he just wiped CM Punk's blood on his face. But that's cool. CM Punk won after, I think, three GTSs. I'm not kidding. Not, ne not necessarily consecutively. I think the second and third were consecutive, but maybe not the first, you know. But, uh, yeah, cool, you know, oh, and he paid tribute to John Cena in this match, the GOAT, John Cena, not CM Punk, John Cena's the GOAT, um, I know your neckbeards are probably crying and fapping to the indies non-stop after I said that, but anyway, next up we have the Minneapolis Street Fight, we have the inner circle consisting of Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, who is the current AW, uh, TNT champion and Santana and Ortiz versus men of the year consisting of Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky and American top team consisting of Junior Dos Santos, UFC's Andre Arlovsky and Dan Lambert. This, I don't know, I, I was, it was probably the, the false count anyway match from earlier tonight that had me thinking this would be like that, but it was nothing like that. Um, it was very, you know, cool down match. I, I kind of thought of, in a way, CM Punk vs. Kingston and maybe this match as like a cool downish match. I mean, they did some cool ass stuff with tables and shit. I'm not saying they didn't do that for a street fight. They absolutely did. But it was a lot more methodically paced, you know. Um, Sammy Guevara did this awesome, like, swanton bomb to somebody on the other team. That was, uh, on the top of a ladder through a table. He did the song on him. That was so cool, man. Um, and, uh, then the Ernest Circle won. Um, I forgot who pinned who. But, uh, yeah. Very solid match. And now we're going to the main event. For the second year in a row, we have Hangman Adam Page versus Kenny Omega. Last year, a show I did not review or see, by the way. I was looking for streams for last year's Full Gear show, but I couldn't find any. I couldn't. Like, not not, not any that, like, worked or anything. Um, like, fucking useless, eh? Um, and, uh, Yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, um, um, that was Facebook, of course, um, my man, Ryan, very happy about the main event result, anyway, now this year, AW World Championship main event, this time last year was the opener, and now this year is the main event, how cool is that, alright, Kenny Omega defending against Defending the AEW World Championship against Hangman Adam Page. This match was epic. 
I just loved every second of this match. Just, you know, lots of counters. And especially near the end, man. It really, like, had me on the edge of my seat. Like, who's going to win? Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. Um, Jay Lethal uh, is all elite. Uh, just before the main event started, Tony Savani, or whatever his name is, came out and said, Very surprised. Jay Lethal is all elite. Awesome, because Jay Lethal is my favorite ROH wrestler ever. And ROH, for some reason fight everyone <laughs> this year um but uh you know that's their decision i didn't understand it but it's their decision hopefully that decision pays off in the end um but uh yeah um this match was epic uh, uh there was this awesome spot when like hangman and page he actually took off um the camera in the corner you know to be able to stand on not not quite the top turnbuckle, but like the little metal piece just above it, you know? To and then he freaking like did a diving crossbody to Kenny Omega through a table, which was so cool. Um But uh yeah. Um and then lots of shenanigans. Uh what was I saying? Um the young bucks actually came out and Don Callis, of course, was doing a lot of shit. Um, and uh, and we, we were thinking the Young Bucks were going to do the same thing, but then the Young Bucks were like, you know what? I'm giving you a nod. I'm giving you my approval now. And then, uh, oh, Hangman Adam Page actually did the one-winged angel to Kenny Omega, which was badass. And Kenny actually kicked out. Which I was kind of expecting, admittedly, you know. Um, but, like, still, like, I think he's, like, the second ever wrestler to kick out, you know. The first being Kota Ibushi, you know. Um, but Hangman and Page, he did that. I keep forgetting, I, I don't, I don't know the name of the move, but that move he does when he, he's, like, on the ropes, and then he flips forward. And then does that clothesline. He did that to Kenny Omega. One, two, three. And Hangman Adam Page is your fourth ever AEW World Champion. Congrats, man. I, that was my personal match of the night. The main event, man. Just because I was... It was so satisfying to, his, to see... Uh, it's satisfying when a title changes hands for me, you know. And uh, I didn't do a review of the match... But, um, and the match I'm talking about is, uh, Kenny Omega when he defeated John Moxley for the title last year at AW Winter is Coming or whatever it was called. I did stream and watch that match. I didn't stream the whole episode, but I did watch that match. It was epic. I do wish I'd reviewed it, even if it was just a one match review, you know? I do wish that. But, uh, um, that was December 2nd, 2020. And, uh, here we are, November 13th, 2021, and, <laughs> um, Kenny Omega, and if you're wondering what, what I'm getting at here, December 1st is my YouTube anniversary, alright, and Kenny Omega was not AW World Champion during any transition from one you one YouTube year of mine to the next. You know what I mean? Like he 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 was not AW World Champion on my ten year anniversary of YouTube, which was de December first, twenty twenty. That was John Moxley. One day later, Kenny Omega won the title, and and literally weeks before my eleven year anniversary, Kenny Omega lost the title. So no transition. At all with him as AEW World Champion. And he was champion for a long ass time. I was sure that he was going to go full 365. And that's just extremely satisfying to me. You know. And I'm not trying to hate on Kenny or nothing. But you know what I mean. Just. just It's satisfying to me. If I hope what I was saying made sense. You know. But uh, yeah. AEW Full Gear. Long as fuck. But man. I had so much fun watching it. There were so many epic matches. And such a satisfying ending. My man Jay Lethal is in AEW. Um, and no 
Bray Wyatt debut. The Nick Beards are crying, and I don't give a shit. Okay, I know that you Nick Beards probably wanted the show to end with Bray Wyatt debuting AEW. I never liked Bray Wyatt. All right, like most overrated wrestler of all time to me. Honestly, you Nick Beards were just jacking off non-stop to him. I don't see it at all. You were rooting for him over wrestlers that piss on him. And I'm just glad he did not debut in AW. At least not on this pay-per-view. That would have been a downer for me. And I know you Nick Beards would have freaking jacked off non-stop if that had happened. But, uh... But, uh, yeah. That's my th review of AW Full Gear 2021. Thank you so much for, uh, listening to my review. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, I, I really enjoyed, uh, reviewing this, actually. I enjoyed watching this pay-per-view. I enjoyed watching it. And, uh, yeah. If you enjoyed your boy's thoughts, please let me know, because I would very much appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, freaking epic show. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm your boy, Mark, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day, y'all. Peace out.